Well, the Sierra in the winter, we often think of fun times, skiing, snowboarding, maybe some sledding as well. But as things warm up in the mountains, all that snow melts away and that turns into a very important resource for California, that being the water. So typically the peak snowpack is April 1 in the Sierra. After that point, the snow melt really begins April through May, through June and July. So that trend really kicks in. So if you think of it, looking out toward the mountains, this is all locked up water for us in that frozen state. But as things warm up, we will get that water out of it. So in terms of the Sierra snowpack, it supplies about 30% of California's water supply. And the two largest reservoirs in the state, a lot of reservoirs pick up the melting snow. But as you can see, Shasta near the Redding area does the rely on some of that to snowpack to fill part of that reservoir. And then in Butte County, we have Oroville, often a popular recreation area. This reservoir picks up some of the snow melt as well. So two of the largest California reservoirs rely on the snow melt. Also, the river system is impacted as well. So, of course, in the winter, we get the building snowpack, and then once that melts, the rivers are energized. And two of the big rivers, you can see the Sacramento River that runs from Mount Shasta up to, uh, to uh, towards Sacramento and out toward the Delta. The main tributaries, the Feather, the Yuba, and the American River. And then another big river, the San Joaquin River. This runs from the uh, Southern Sierra into the Central Valley. The main tributaries, the Merced, the Tuolumne, Tuolumne and the Stanislaus River. That is all the water supply, but also recreation on the river is also impacted as well because all of that snow melts and really energizes the river. As you can see those rapids out there. And in terms of how we measure the energy on the rivers, you can see the term CFS, cubic feet per second. It sounds like a complicated term, but it really is not. So the stronger the river, the higher the CFS. And if you think about a basketball, one basketball is about one cubic foot. So if you think about 2,000 water basketballs, 6,000 water basketballs, 10,000 water basketballs going by at one point on the river, that gives you a sign or an idea of just how strong that river is. So, of course, that will have a huge impact on both the, the excitement on the, on the river and also the danger on the river because the stronger flows will boost the danger. Now, the California River Forecast Center issues these uh, forecast plots for multiple rivers, as you can see on this uh, map here. This particular point, we are looking at the Merced River, the Yosemite Valley, and this is showing a max flow of 2737 CFS and you can see kind of the plot here on this portion of the graph. You can see how the river goes up and in fact as you get warming temperatures it can actually go up in time and that will definitely impact the river behavior. So one day the river could be fairly quiet and the next day you could have uh, some stronger flows that could uh, definitely lead to uh, maybe some more dangerous conditions. So when you look at the Sierra just think this is an important part of our water supply. This also really impacts the rivers here in California.